Howdy, it's Matt, and in this episode for you, we have the iNav Maiden of the Nano Talon. And you'll notice on here, we've got a bigger antenna, uh, and we've actually got a GPS unit back there. Now, don't worry if you can't see it on the screen, I will put some photos up on the screen for you in just a few moments' time. Now, you must be wondering, Matt, why have you been and put iNav uh, on the Nano Talon when it already has a stabilizer on board? Well, the, the brutal reality is that I want extra functions, in short. Uh, I want better stabilization, I want return to home, uh, and I want the OSD, which you can see around the screen right now. Uh, and by the way, this is some DVR recording uh, of a flight this morning. Now, this isn't technically the maiden uh, of the Nano Talon with iNav on it. It's actually the second flight because the first flight was just wild in short. Basically, I was using the iNav auto tune feature. Uh, so it was just me flying around in circles, rolling up backwards and whatever else, uh, just getting the PIDs tuned in. Uh, well, they, they, they call them PIFs, but uh, basically they've got a tune mode and it's not very exciting. Whereas this one is miles better. So with that said, why iNav? Now, if you don't know anything about iNav, then I've been and created a complete big, uh, a complete series for complete noobs like me and you uh, on YouTube, and there's a link to that in the top right-hand corner. Now, with that said, uh, iNav, I wanted return to home features. I wanted a, a better OSD, which we're gonna take a look at in just a few moments time. Uh, and I wanted, frankly, better stabilization. The inbuilt stabilizer is okay, but I know that iNav could do better. So ultimately, it's my model. Remember, this wasn't a freebie for review. Uh, this is my model, uh, and I wanted iNav in it. And I kind of uh, picked my, uh, I already made that decision by the, like, the second she arrived, but I needed to show you that it does fly right out of the box, you know. And the plug and, fly, the plug and play components are right. I, I was just unhappy about the quad ESC. That said, it did actually work all right, if that makes sense. It wasn't getting stupidly hot and it did work. And I have been on and kept the motor, the standard motor uh, on the back with the 6030 propeller as well. Keep that in the back of your mind. Now, before we go any further, the, obviously this is only the second flight which I've had with the Nano Talon with iNav on it. Uh, and I'm still learning the sticks. One big thing which I need to do in the transmitter after recording this video for you uh, is that I need to take some of the expo out of the elevator because you'll see there's a few moves here uh, and it's a bit harsh. Uh, now, a quick walk around the screen for you and I will highlight a couple of sections for you. Uh, the first one is the, uh, the mode. So at the, currently you can see that it says pass, and that means pass through mode, so that's no stabilization. Uh, this is just pure stick inputs from myself, uh, and it's au naturel uh, in short. You'll see then on the left hand side is the speed, and that's in kilometers per hour, so we're doing 65 then. Now do note that it's GPS speed, so it's roughly accurate. Uh, down in the bottom left hand corner, we do have the number of satellites and the GPS latitude. Obviously I've been and blurred that out for privacy reasons. Uh, at the top, uh, we've got the distance from home and an arrow pointing back home. Remember I said about this return to home feature uh, is that if I get stuck, click, click, model returns home. Absolutely brilliant, uh, and like I said, there's a whole series on iNav, uh, and you can go and watch that if you if that's something which you're interested in. In the top right hand corner, we've got the pack voltage. Uh, I think this flight went on for about 15 minutes, and we really didn't duck below 15 volts on there. It was a 1600 milliampere 4S pack, which I was using again because the extra weight which I added to the behind the CG, uh, it means that uh, the pack fitted fit into the model, the nose area beautifully uh, and I was able to hit CG. Uh, then we've the, right now it says 2.74, uh, that is the amps being pulled, 2 point, like three, like three amps for this kind of speed and chilling around. Absolutely brilliant, super efficient airflame, it's just like the Mini Talon, the bigger version of it. 
Uh, underneath there, we've got the mini amp for your used, which is showing 608 at the moment. Uh, and then you've got the throttle stick movement. So you'll see that right now I'm on 30% throttle, uh, 30, and I'm moving it up 44, 35. And you can see I'm really feathering the throttle, but only down at the lower part of the range on there. Uh, and then we've got the height as well. Uh, and then there's a flight timer in the bottom right hand corner, which my head's probably on there. Anyway. With that said, uh, what I'm now going to go and do is that we will come into land in just a few moments time uh, and what we'll do is that we're going to jump across to the desk uh, and I'm going to give you a rundown on my layout because I learned so many different things when I was putting this one together for iNav. I made, uh, I tried a couple of different things and a couple of routes didn't work so the best thing to do uh, is for us to jump across to the, the, the actual desk uh, and we'll look at this together in full HD. So with that said, I'm about to land and I'll see you over on the desk in just a moment. Okay, so we've been and come across to the desk and this is the setup which I have uh, for my Nano Tanner. Now there's a couple of things which you're going to notice straight away uh, is that GPS unit on the back, we've got the antennas in the middle and we've got the FPV at the front. Now normally what I would do uh, on my models which I fly obviously within range uh, of line of sight uh, is try and separate the receiver and the video transmitter out. Can't really do that with this model because uh, the wings are detachable. They literally uh, just click off. So, uh, hmm, that was the uh, first challenge which we had was being able to work around that. So that's the like maximum separation which I've gone. The biggest two really are these two. The video transmitter itself uh, needs to be far away from the receiver. I've had where the VTX has been flooding the receiver. Uh, and that's caused issues with range, so I've separated them out. The GPS really does have clear view uh, of the sky, so that is actually fine there. Now, uh, one big thing which I kept getting asked in the Facebook group, have I been and kept the standard plug and play motor? And the answer to that is yes, I have. So that is the standard 6030 prop and the plug and play motor which came with the model. Uh, I don't actually foresee any reason to change it. In short, it is doing a really, really good job. Uh, it cruises around, as we saw a few moments ago, on free amps. That is happy days. So with that said, let's open her up and see what's going on. So uh, let's start with the nose area. So we just click to undo there. Uh, in the nose area itself, uh, we've got the Runcam Mini Swift uh, with the cables running up underneath the plywood base. Uh, we've got the Ishin, uh, and again, I'll put links to everything which I've got in my model uh, in the video description for you. Uh, and also uh, the settings for iNav, I will also put those in the video description for you as well. Uh, or a link to them because I might put them on Pastebin just so it's easier. Uh, anyway, the Ayamaway antenna, Ishin TX526 video transmitter, brilliant little uh, transmitters. Little push button on the back, really, really simple to change channels and change power settings. Uh, and that's the nose area. I, to be honest, I could do with a little bit of extra Velcro in there. That's the one minor tweak which I've got for this. Uh, besides that, really straightforward. Uh, and let's get into the uh, hatch area. Now, this is the area which took the second amount of uh, most amount of uh, effort because it pretty is crammed in here to say the least. Now you'll notice that I've got an antenna here for an L9R receiver. The actual mount, I'll put a link to that from Thingiverse in the video description for you. Uh, so uh, let's click this up. Now it is a little bit of a challenge because I velcroed that in on its side. So you'll see that I did cut a hole up underneath there. We've got the L9R. Uh, it is providing SBUS to the flight controller itself. Uh, and it's being stood up, and again, it's a little bit awkward for me to show you how I hope this is coming out on the camera for you. It's being stood up on its side. I did, in fact, why don't I undo this so we can get this out of the way. Uh, let me unplug that mode. Is well, tell you what, there you go. You can see on the camera, uh, there's the stand and we've got the uh, receiver up underneath. So it's very easy to detach. 
uh, if required. I did try putting that receiver up underneath this little section underneath here. There is a hole underneath there, but I cannot get the, uh, the L9R, including the case, to fit up underneath there. In fact, I've got an X8R. Yeah, it just won't fit in there either direction. Uh, the hole's not big enough and you can't cut back into the, into the rear of the model because that's where the rear fins are. Uh, maybe if you depinned this, uh, you might be able to get it to fit in there. Uh, but I, I like to always like to keep the cases on mine, so hey ho, uh, I tried. Uh, in short, uh, we've got iNav in the middle, and uh, I am going to bring this up and see if I can put that on the camera for you. So there's the flight controller. Do note that this flight controller is turned to the left by 90 degrees. So that means that in iNav, I have set the board orientation to the your direction to. 270 degrees so that everything works as expected that i haven't done a video on that so uh on the yet in the inav series uh, so do go watch out for that because actually the front of the board uh, is here where the uh, uh servo connectors and the s bus in is uh, actually that's normally supposed to be that way around so i've changed the orientation in inav to do that uh, we've got the main cables which could then go down we hold that like so mains cables go down that side and we've got the receiver and gps on that side and note i have done my best to separate uh, the two systems away from each other so anything which is receiver or, or output based is on that side and anything which is noisy motor wise or electrical wise is on the opposite side of the board uh, and again even the fpv stuff is uh, going out that same side as well trying to keep it away from the power lines itself uh, I am powering the board. Uh, well, this is an F4 board, so it'll power itself off the main flight pack. Uh, but the servo rail, I am powering that off the ESC, which we will take a look at in just a moment. Now, those spark bunnies amongst you may have noticed that I did do a mod on this one. Uh, we do have two. Uh, they are the little Hobby King HT60, whatever they were, uh, servos uh, at the back. That does mean that we have a true VTEL. Uh, and we have both elevator and rudder, so we need a special mix uh, in iNav uh, so that we can. Uh, so iNav knows that it's a VTEL, uh, and that works really, really well. That uh, I did actually learn <laughs> in the flight, uh, which I did, the earlier part of the flight, which I didn't actually show you, uh, is that if you give it too much rudder, too much aileron, and not enough throttle, it will stall on you. Uh, that was a little bit bemusing. Uh, to say the least, but uh, miles away from the ground, so we were fine uh, and saved it very, very quickly. And again, it was very predictable. I could see it come in, and then it stalled, and then it just turned over, and then off we went again. It was a very, very predictable stall, so that was really straightforward. Uh, also, while we're here uh, looking at the rear of the model, you'll notice the GPS unit. Uh, what I've done, and again, this is going to be really difficult for you to see on the camera. You'll have to take my word for it. It's basically the GPS unit velcroed on cut a hole there for the cable and that comes out underneath here down in between those servos and then it pops around on the underside so i tell you what let's go and take a look underneath so you can see what i'm talking about uh, and you'll notice i've put a little hatch here oh one thing which i didn't show you uh, is and again i really hope that's going to come out i've put a bigger 3d printed uh knacker duct up underneath there and again i don't know how well that's going to come in out of the camera for you can't actually see, see the screen right now but i have been and put uh, a nice big knacker duct in there to get loads of uh, ventilation uh, into the model itself uh, and i don't know how well you're going to be able to see it like that uh, but it is pretty damn big in there and that means we get loads of air inside the model uh, and that's a, one big tip for you always make sure you try and get lots and lots of ventilation uh, into your model itself Let's turn her over. Uh, another 3D printed part, and again, I'll put links to everything which I've used in my build uh, in the video description. Uh, you'll notice that I haven't actually laminated this one yet. I really must get round to it because uh, this really is my current favorite uh, at the moment because it will FPV, it will fly for a long period of time, and now she's got iNav in it. That's clustered happy days. So I've got a much bigger exit hole here. So that's the reason why I've put that on there. It means that we've got much, much more of the ability for air to escape out the back of this model. Uh, and it does look pretty cool. And again, when it's clicked up, 
underneath is never actually going to hit the ground. So maybe I could have put a bigger one on there thinking about it. Uh, so that was just a 3D printed part, which again, scaled down to make it fit on there. Apologies, I don't know the exact side dimensions. You'll have to play uh, with your own for that one. Um, and just PLA and then up underneath which you'll see here on the bottom and let me turn this round so we've got the ESC uh, which then the cables go off to the motor at the back uh, and then the GPS and the servo cable and I did need to put servo extensions on all the servos uh, and they're just cable tied in uh, and you'll notice in here that we got the power system to one side of the board or one side of the model which was the right hand side to keep the power on this side and then on the left hand side uh, we've got the servos on there and of course I do have a little separate wiring loom uh, with a Tori coil on there uh, for the FPV system to power the video transmitter uh, and the FPV camera. So that's it. Um, as far as like setup on the flight time, uh, flight line, well, it depends whether you well, it's, it's stick a battery and go, you know, even if you've taken the wings off, uh, it only takes a few seconds to actually put the model together. And I just, again, you watch me doing this. Uh, is that it is super straightforward to do uh, and again I am a little bit particular again remember this is my own model this wasn't a, a freebie uh, and do note that I haven't actually connected up the RSSI yet uh, I will do that later today it's only just a little connector for me to to join up and it will take no more than like two minutes to do and perhaps Matt should have done it this morning so yeah pop your battery in the nose make sure the cables are in the right round, way round again I was using a Turnigy 1600 milliampere 4s pack one of the nanotech ones uh, and stick the bottom back in uh, and yeah i just carried it out to the flight line with the with the wings on you know uh, but yeah setup time on the the actual uh, flight line itself is absolutely minimal you just got to put the wings in and then go clunk and uh, uh, jobs are good in, uh, in short uh, and there you go that is the nano talon with inav so, just to quickly recap, all the details, all the links to everything which I've been and used on my model are in the video description for you. True to my word, the one thing which I didn't like was the quad ESC. I have changed that for a Turnigy 18 amp uh, plush ESC in the bottom. Complete overkill for this scenario, uh, but it was, the, it was the one which I had on hand and I, I classed it was better than the quad ESC higher rating actually had a heat sink on it and it's been proven to work really really well i have kept the stock motor that has worked really really well so far uh with the 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 say does well on the 10 or so flights which i've had with the nano talent it has worked out really really well uh, and again massive tip do put some sellotape along the leading edge of your wings because that will definitely save it uh, save it from damage and remember this one has already hit two trees uh, and has been landed uh, in a hedge uh, and into some crops as well and that sellotape on the leading head edge has worked out really really well so time for me to wrap up i would like to say a massive thank you to you for taking the time to watch this episode if you have any questions uh, about uh, this setup please just ask in the comments section underneath this video Remember, I have got a full uh, series uh, on the setup and use of iNav. Uh, it is super, well, it's one fifth of the cost of an Eagle Tree Vector, and I get pretty much 99% of exactly the same functionality. So for me, this is where I was always going to take my Nano Talon, uh, and it's fantastic. Literally, get to the flight line, stick the battery in it, wait for the, the, the GPS to, to get a fix. Uh, and then throw it and enjoy. Absolutely brilliant. Um, there's not much more I can say, really. So on that note, from myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this episode, and I'll see you again next time. Cheerios! <laughs>